اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ويلكم اول تو شباب المحدي فاست لايف زوم سيشن وي غون ستارت ويت بارت اوف دو اكمل باي مولا سبتين غلام حسين وين يو ريدي مولا ان شاء الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمه الله وبركاته I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this situation becomes better. We can do ziyarat of each other from closely, inshallah. But till then, uh, we'll keep going the way it is, inshallah. We pray for all mu'mini across the world. And inshallah, let us do a f- small part of du'a kumail together. I know I'm not going to recite the whole du'a because it might get people tired, but I'll choose a few parts of it, inshallah. And you all can uh, join in the recitation of the du'a. As-salawat on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إلهي قلبي محجوب ونفسي معيوب وأقلي مظلوم وهوائي ظالم وطاعتي قليل ومعصيتي كثير يا ستار العيوب ويا غفار الذنوب ويا علام القيوم اغفر ذنوبي كلها يا غفار يا غفار يا غفار برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء وبقوتك التي قضرت بها كل شيء وقضى لها كل شيء وذل لها كل شيء وبجبروتك التي غلبت بها كل شيء وبعزتك التي لا يقوم لها شيء وبعظمتك التي ملأت كل شيء وبسلطانك الذي على كل شيء وبوجهك الباقي بعد فناء كل شيء وبأسمائك التي ملأت أركان كل شيء وبعلمك الذي أحاط بكل شيء وبنور وجهك الذي أضاء له كل شيء يا نور يا قدوس يا نور يا قدوس يا أول الأولين ويا آخر الآخرين اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تبتك العصام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل النقام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي 
تغير النقام اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء والله forgive those sins which are an obstacle in the acceptance of my du'as اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبته وكل خطية اخطأتها اللهم اني يتقرب اليك بذكرك واستشفع بك الى نفسك واسالك بجودك ان تدنيني من قربك وان تهزعني شكرك وأن تلهمني ذكرك اللهم إني أسألك عن سؤال خاضعك متذلل خاشع أن تسامحني وترحمني وتجعلني بقسمك راضيا فانعا وفي جميع الأحوال متواضعا اللهم وأسألك سؤال من اشتد الفاقته وأنزل بك عند الشدائد حادثا اللهم فيما عندك رغبته اللهم اعظم سلطانك وعلى مكانك وخفي مكروك وظهر امرك وغلب قهرك وجرت قدرتك ولا يمكن الفرار من حكومتك الله no matter how much I sin I cannot run away from your custody ya Allah اللهم لا جد لذنوبي وفرار ولا لقبائحي ساترا ولا لشيء من عملي القبيح بالحسن مبدلا غيرك لا اله الا انت سبحانك وبحمدك the first step of Toba is that we confess that we have done wrong to ourselves all together ولم توب نفسي يا الله ولم توب نفسي ولم توب نفسي ولم توب نفسي عاطيات مستغيثي يا الله يا غياثان مستغيثي I can't hear you but you can raise your voices together يا ربي يا ربي يا موسيقى 
ربي يا رب أسألك بحقك وقدسك وعظم صفاتك وأسمائك أن تجعل أوقاتي من الليل والنهار بذكرك معمورا وبخدمتك موصولا وأعمالي عندك مقبولا حتى تكون أعمالي وأورادي كلها وردا واحدا وحالي في خدمتك سرمدا يا سيدي يا من عليه ما وليم يا من إليه شكوت أحوالي يا ربي يا ربي يا رب يا ربي يا ربي يا رب أو على خدمتك جوارحي واشدد على العزيمة جوارحي وهب لي الجد في خشيتك والدوام في الاتصال بخدمتك حتى أسرح إليك في ميادين السابقين وأسرع إليك في البارزين وأشتاق إلى قربك في المشتاقين وأدلغ منك دنو المخلصين وأخافك مخافة المؤمنين وأجتمع في جوارك مع المؤمنين اللهم ومن أرادني بسوء فارغ ومن كادني فكيك وجعلني من محسن عبيدك نصيبا عندك وأقربهم منزلة منك وأخسهم زلفة لدنك فإنه لا ينال ذلك إلا بفضلك وجدني بجودك واطف علي بمجدك واحفظني برحمتك واجعلني سامي بذكرك لهجا وقلبي بحبك متيما ومن علي بحسن اجابتك واطل عطرك واغفر زلتي فإنك قضيت على عبادك بعبادتك وأمرتهم بدعائك وضمنت لهم إجابة فإليك يا ربي نصبت وجهي وإليك يا ربي مددت يدي ففي عزتك استجب لي دعائي وبلغني مناي ولا تقطع من فضلك رجائي واكفني شر الجن والانس من عدائي raise your hands together يا سريع الرباب يا سريع اغفر لمن لا يملك الا الدعاء فانك فعال لما تشاء يا من اسمه دواء وذكره شفاء وطاعته غناء ارحم الرأس ماله الرجاء وصلاحه البكاء يا سابغ النعم يا دافع النقام يا نور المستوحشين في الظلام يا عالم لا يعلم صلى 
ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa fa'al bima anta ahluhu wa sallallahu ala rasulih wal a'immati al-mayamina min alih wa sallama tasliman tasliman we really appreciate you joining us today it was amazing it was amazing habibi may allah bless you shukran So we started this initiative, Shabab al-Mahdi, to give the spirit of Ramadan in our houses. Shabab al-Mahdi was created by myself, Ali Mohsin Kimji, and my brother, Irfan Nanji. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I hope you guys uh, benefit from these sessions. Um, I mean, we've, we've tried our best to get a few speakers to speak to us and discuss rather discuss and make it as interactive as possible throughout Ramadan and I hope you guys actually benefit from this as in because we won't be going to the mosque but we're trying to create that that feeling of Ramadan of being together through this these virtual platforms and with that I'd like to invite our speaker for today brother Yasser Alidina who for me is a phenomenal and a moving speaker. I mean, he's, he's spoken to us so many times, the small uh, talks he gives us and anything he does, whatever he does, he does for the betterment of everyone. So with that, I'd like to invite Brother Yasser to start us off. <clears throat> Uh, can, you, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to, um, to be part of this program. So uh, for today, um, I thought we'll have a small discussion, uh, a very short one, inshallah, uh, since it's the start of this whole uh, initiative. And inshallah, uh, in the next few sessions, you'll have uh, other people coming and speaking to you in more details, inshallah. Um, if it's possible, I'd like to share my screen. Um, let me just do that. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, okay. So uh, firstly, I would like the session to be a bit interactive. Uh, you're all behind your screens, and uh, if I talk for half an hour, I think you might fall asleep, and I'll be just talking to my screen. So um, it would be nice if people can uh, join in, uh, if you can allow people to uh, turn on their mics and uh, speak. Uh, it would be nice to make it interactive, make it less boring. Um, so the topic that uh, we wanted to discuss was preparing for Shahr Ramadan. Uh, not only preparing for Shabbat Ramadan, which is coming in two weeks, in uh, two days, but also in light of the current situation we're in, uh, the Corona situation. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. So when we want to discuss the um, preparing, how to prepare for the month of Ramadan, um, I think it's first important for us to uh, understand the value of, of Shah Ramadan. Uh, if you notice in your life, when you look at what you do and where, where do you put your time in most, where do you put most effort, you realize that you usually put effort in things that you see benefiting, that have value for you, things that you feel are important. That's where you're going to put most of your efforts in, right? That's obvious. 
So then we need to understand what benefits and value does the month of Ramadan have for me. Right? If we don't understand that, if we don't realize that, then we're not really going to be able to put time into this or put effort into preparing ourselves for the month of Ramadan. And also during the month of Ramadan, we may not be able to uh, make the most of it because we don't realize its value. So just to make sure that uh, where uh, everybody is here and people can interact, uh, let me start by opening the floor and asking your um, uh, your views or your understanding of what value does Mahir Ramadan have for uh, you guys. Uh, anyone that wishes to speak, you can use the raise hand button and uh, then we can unmute you. Or you can just uh, write in the chats if you'd like, if you don't want to talk. You can just write on the chats and we'll discuss. Um, okay, so the question again is why, what is your view on why Mahir Ramadan is important for you? What benefit does Mahir Ramadan have for you? What value does it have? I mean, why should we even be talking about, uh, you know, preparing yourself for Mahir Ramadan? If you've come here today and you want to know about how to prepare yourself, that means you see some importance in Mahir Ramadan. So I want to hear your, your different views on why do you think Mahir Ramadan is important? Brother. Okay, so uh, the brother is saying that it's the month when the Holy Quran was gifted to us. Okay, that's an important, that gives a lot of importance to the month of Ramadan. It's the month in which the Quran was revealed. Okay, what else? Uh, brother Yasin, Salaam Alaikum, good to see you. Alaikum uh, Salaam So, um, my Ramadan actually brings, for me personally, is it just has a different vibe to me. Okay. And um, like, so during the fast, I have to just realize like Allah is asking us to do everything right in this month and then continue later. So okay. that's, that's where I start every Ramadan from. And that's, the, that's what Ramadan brings me is an okay. opportunity to do right. That's very nice. It's an opportunity. It's a new opportunity. It's like a push for us to do good deeds. Yeah, excellent. Um, another uh, brother wrote, uh, in Zalna Filatil Qadr, meaning that it's the, the night of Qadr is, uh, is in this uh, month. And the night of Qadr, we all know from the verse, uh, from the Surah of Qadr, that it's one of the biggest nights, possibly the biggest night, uh, which makes my Ramadan very special. It's a time to get closer to our Lord, definitely. Uh, we can connect better to our Lord uh, definitely it's a month which somehow, like the brother said, there's a different vibe. We just feel like, you know, uh, we feel more motivated to obey Allah. We feel more motivated to do uh, the ibadah that we wouldn't have done in other months. So that's really excellent. Yeah, It's the month of Allah, definitely. The fact that it's the month of Allah, it has a value in it. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, for contributing. It's nice to, uh, to see um, your views. It allows us to come close to Allah. It gives hope to be forgiven. Yes, excellent. So now let, let's, uh, let me ask the same question now to the Holy Prophet. Let's see what the Prophet has to say. Now you all know about the famous khutbah of the Prophet uh, at the end of the month of Sha'ban. Um, there's a famous khutbah. Uh, it's been translated as well. I'll share the link at the end of the presentation. So let's see how the Prophet introduces the month of Ramadan for us. The Prophet says, O oh people, indeed ahead of you is the blessed month of Allah a month of blessing mercy and forgiveness a month which uh, allah uh, a month which which with allah is the best of months its days the best of days its nights the best of nights its hours the best of hours is the month which invites you to be the guests of allah and invites you to be one of those near to him each breath you take glorifies him your sleep is worship your deeds are accepted and your supplications are answered how amazing is this? How amazing is this month? Here the Prophet is describing the month of Ramadan to us. He's trying to tell us, the Prophet is sort of answering this question for you and me, that what benefit and value does the month of Ramadan have? Well, the month of Ramadan in itself is a time where the ni'mat of Allah is showered upon us. It's an opportunity for forgiveness. We know we've committed so many sins. I mean, we can't, we can pretend to other people, but we can't lie to ourselves. We know we've committed a lot of sins. But well, this is the month that the Prophet is saying, this is the month where we can change that. We can change our past and we can change our future because of the Laylatul Qadr. 
So it's a special month. It's a time when the days and nights have a different vibe. This is what brings that vibe. You are now the guest of Allah. Okay, it's an opportunity for change. Mahir Ramadan is that time where the hard things become easy. So you have so much hope, you really wish sometimes, you know, you hear about Ayatollah Bahjat and all of these great scholars who used to do ibadat and get close to Allah. And you're like, what if I got the chance to do that? Well, this month is that month. This month is a month where those hard ibadat now become easy for you. All of a sudden, you don't know why. You're the same person. You haven't changed. But somehow, there's something around you that makes it much easier for you. That's the blessing of Allah. It's the mercy of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah that does that. And it's also a time where you have a lot of hajat and Allah is promising He will answer those hajat. That's really amazing, right? There's so many things you want, material blessings, spiritual blessings. This is the month where Allah has said, come and ask me. You're more likely to receive it because now your heart is softer, you're closer to Allah, your ibadat are more, and now your supplications will have more value. And uh, obviously, uh, your breathing and your sleeping has uh, benefits in it as well. Okay, then the Prophet continues. Now that you know this is the benefit of the month of Ramadan, so he says, repent to Allah for your sins and raise your hands in dua during these times, for they are the best of times and Allah looks towards his creatures with kindness. This is the month that's just about to come, in two days. This is the month where Allah looks towards us with kindness replying to them during the hours and granting their needs if he is asked. Now that's really important, right? He's saying if we ask Allah, if we put that effort to ask Allah, then we will get what we want. So this is the value of the month of Ramadan. This is what Ramadan will give us. And this is just a small a summary. We can expand on all of these, right? The spiritual blessings, the material blessings of Allah are abundant in this month. Okay. So, if we understand now the value of the month of Ramadan, now we feel, okay, how do I make the most of it? You must have heard the, uh, the fact that Mahi Ramadan is like a banquet, where the guests of Allah coming to a banquet. Now imagine a banquet, a physical banquet, where you come in a hall and there's loads of food, right? And when you look at all that tasty food, you really wish you could eat all of it. But obviously you can't. Why? Because you don't have that capacity. So before, the, before you go to the banquet, what do you do? You make sure you don't eat breakfast, lunch, so that you can have as much dinner as you can, right? What are you trying to do? You're trying to increase your capacity to consume as much food as you can when you get to that party, when you get to that banquet. This is what we need to do, okay? We need to prepare ourselves and increase our capacity before the month of Ramadan comes, so that when we enter the month, we enter with a bigger capacity that we can take more from this month. Okay, there's uh, another um, analogy that even the Quran brings this analogy of the valley where the rain falls. When the rain falls in a valley, the valley can only take as much water as its capacity. It can't take more than that. The water is pouring. The blessings of Allah are pouring on us. But we can only take as much as our capacity allows us to. So we need to increase that capacity. So how do we prepare for this month. Now I would like to open the floor again and hear your views on what do you think we can do to prepare for this month of Ramadan to help us increase and grow in our capacity. I can start us off. Mm. Alaikum. Alaikum. Um, so there's one point where there's a hadith, I'm not going to quote it because I don't know by which one, but he says that um, Rajab, there's Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan. So Rajab is when you plant the seeds, Shaban is when you water it, and Ramadan when it, it uh, blooms. So I guess it's preparing from, from at least from Rajab where you start preparing slowly, slowly so that you can build that capacity. So when you reach Ramadan, you've reached your peak so that now, you know, you can take full advantage of the month. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So one of the ways to prepare for it is to start by uh, doing the A'mal and, the, and benefiting from Rajab itself and Shaban. But obviously now, unfortunately, Rajab has passed and we're at the end of Shaban. So all this is a good preparation, but right now it seems a bit too late to work on this one, right? So it's definitely a good point. So inshallah for next year, one thing we should keep in mind or keep in uh, mind, uh, 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 mind note that 
for next year, let's try to think about the preparation for Mahir Ramadan and from Rajab, start looking into increasing our spirituality so that we can benefit more from Mahir Ramadan. Obviously, the ideal is that from now until the next Mahir Ramadan, we do our best. But obviously, there are special times in the year and Rajab and Shaban are one of these special times which we need to make the most of it. Now, the fast of Shaban was mentioned by, by a brother in, in the chat. Uh, definitely, the fast in Shaban is one of those sunnahs of the Prophet. And it's something that helps us prepare for ourselves. Now there's one day left, so maybe we can make the most of that. Uh, seeking forgiveness, giving charity, definitely. All these good actions definitely help us uh, become spiritually uh, higher. Okay, so if we haven't done anything in Rajab and Sha'ban, what can we do now? Okay, it's a really it's an important question. It's a really good question. Um, the mercy of Allah is always open. And we notice that there are some du'as. Uh, I don't have it memorized. Let me see if I can find it. There's a dua at the end of Sha'ban where we're asking Allah, oh Allah, at least at the end of Sha'ban now forgive my sins. If I haven't been able to do anything in the past, at least now help me to, uh, to get benefits. Let me see if I can quickly find it for you. Um, oh, okay. Uh, uh, the dua says, Allahumma in lam takun ghafarta lana fima mada min Sha'ban, فَغْفِرْ لَنَا فِيمَا بَقِيَ مِنْ O Allah, if you did not forgive us, okay, previously in the month of Sha'ban, فَغْفِرْ لَنَا فِيمَا بَقِيَ مِنْ At least forgive us now in whatever is left of Sha'ban. Basically, the mercy of Allah is vast and Allah has made it a sin to lose hope in Him. Right? So in any case, if we have made the most of Rajab and Sha'ban, Alhamdulillah. If we haven't, then right now let's turn to Allah and say and, and regret genuinely from the bottom of our heart turn ourselves to Allah and say oh Allah I wish I had missed the most of Rab Rajab and Shaban but I didn't okay I didn't I I own up I didn't make the most of it but oh Allah your mercy is so vast I regret what I did help me help me grow my capacity at least now help me to make the most of Shaban and help me make up for whatever I missed in the past and why wouldn't Allah help us if you really genuinely uh, one that and really genuinely regretted, then these are things that we can get even right now. It's never too late. So we can make a timetable. It's an excellent point. Uh, Self-reflection, excellent. Uh, we're going to talk about these. Uh, mentally focus on your purpose in life and consistently remind yourself how this will benefit you. Excellent point again. These are some really important points and we'll uh, mention these um, as we uh, go ahead. So let me uh, go since it looks like the uh, brothers are already getting ahead of me. So let me move my uh, slides. So the first thing we can do to prepare ourselves is to reflect. And reflection is really important. Internal change happens with reflection. You can get reminders. You can have people telling you what to do. You, can, you know, the Quran is a reminder. The Hadith are reminders. These type of discussions and lectures are good reminders. You know, all these are things that externally try and bring change in you. But the real change only comes from within. When we take these reminders and we ponder over them, we reflect them and we genuinely realize them. It's not good enough to have these things in our minds as mere information. We need to let these things sink in our heart. And how does it sink? It sinks when we reflect over these things, when we ponder over these things. It doesn't mean gaining more knowledge. You see, the stuff I'm talking about right now is not new stuff. You've heard this, right? Those of you who are older would have heard this many, many times, you know, in, in previous Mahir Ramadan. But for many of us, why do we feel like, you know, it's not having an effect on us? Because it simply stayed in our mind at the level of information. It's not sunk in it. We need it to sink in. And the way to do that is to reflect. So what can we reflect about? For example, the value of this month. Yes, we have just seen the hadith of the Prophet that tells us the value. The brothers and sisters have contributed to uh, and told us why this month is valuable. Okay, But if we don't ponder over this, if we don't reflect it, if we don't make ourselves realize it, it won't bring a real change from inside. One of the key points for self-building and internal change is to reflect. And the Quran is full of that. Afala tatadabbarun, afala tatafakkarun, afala taqilun. You know, there's all of these things. So there's a huge emphasis on reflection. So reflecting on the value of this month, okay? 
Why is it beneficial for me? If we reflect on this and we really genuinely realize the importance of this month, we'll be able to act on it. Our actions, reflecting on our own actions, self-reflection, like Brother Ali Khalfan mentioned. Self-reflection. Where do I commit sins? Where, where do I make mistakes? What are my weaknesses and what are my strengths? If I don't reflect and think about these things, how will I ever be able to correct myself? How will I be able to ever bring a change in myself? I don't know where I'm going wrong. I don't know if I lie or don't lie. I don't know if I do ribat or don't do ribat because I've never thought about it. I just speak, I just eat, I just, you know, go here and there, not looking into my own actions and thinking, you know, the, what I just said, was it correct? What I said to my mom this morning, was it, was it the right way of saying it? Was it polite? Um, I don't know. Uh, did I just do riba? Um, you know? Oh, you know, you catch yourself, for example, uh, doing a sin. This comes with self-reflection. So we need to reflect about our own actions. And this in Islamic terminology is called muhasaba, to do hisab, to take hisab, to take yourself into account and think about your weaknesses and your strengths, even your strengths. It's important to know your strengths and so you can develop on them. This is something I find really uh, useful. <laughs> when I say talk to yourself, I don't mean you go out like in the street, you're just talking, hey, Yasser, how are you doing? Not like that, okay? Um, when I say talk to yourself, I mean, when you realize that you, what your habits are, when you realize where your strengths and your, and your weaknesses are, then talk to yourself, tell yourself, look, Yasser, do I not realize my, what my purpose in life is? Do I not realize what month I am in right now? I'm in the month of Ramadan. How important this month is. Why am I not changing myself? What's wrong with me? Come on, I need to push myself. Self-motivating yourself. Talk to yourself and motivate yourself. Remind yourself. Look, it's good to go to a lecture. It's important to go to a lecture to get an external reminder. But that external reminder is only beneficial and useful if you transform it into an internal reminder. When you take that and you now tell yourself that I need to think about these things. I need to change my actions. Every single time I meet this brother, you know, we do ribat of, of that other friend. We need to stop doing riba. Yes, why am I doing riba? Do I not know riba is haram? Do I not know what Allah has promised me? If I do riba, all my sins, all my good deeds will go to him. You know, if you think about these things and slowly, slowly you'll be able to bring a change in yourself. You'll be more conscious about your sins. A lot of times we commit sins because we're just not aware that we're committing them. We're just so used to it that we just commit those sins. So we need to reproach ourselves. We shouldn't be too kind to ourselves. Let, be kind to others, but don't be kind to yourself. Reproach yourself. And the third thing is to ask Allah. Now this is really key for any change, for anything in reality. And this is what the Prophet says in the continuation of this khutbah. So ask Allah your Lord to give you a sound body and an enlightened heart so you may be able to fast and recite his book. You see, Allah has asked us to fast. But if we don't ask Allah for the tawfiq, we may not be able to fast this month. An urgent uh, travel uh, plan might come up. An illness might come up. That you might be deprived of the, the fasting of the month of Ramadan. Yes, you can give qada in other months. But the qada fast is not the same as the fast in the month of Ramadan. Okay? So ask Allah for that tawfiq to be able to fast in this month. Ask Allah for the tawfiq to be able to get to increase your capacity and benefit in this month of Ramadan. Success only comes from Allah. Allah wants us to try, but the actual result in the success is from Allah. Excellent. This is a very good point that pondering over our actions at the end of the day, uh, and this can wholly, uh, help slowly in self-reflection, hence getting closer to Allah. Definitely. This in, in uh, Islamic literature is called muhasaba, to do hisab of your nafs. Usually the, the, the scholars, um, based on the hadith, obviously suggest that, we uh, do this hisab of ourselves at the end of the day. At the end of the day, we sit down for five minutes and think about our day and see where have we been going wrong. It takes time, it needs to be get used to, but it's a very good practice. And uh, the hadiths have emphasized a lot on taking yourself into account. Okay, thank you very much, Zakawa. Okay. okay. Can, I, can I interrupt you? Of course. Okay, I have a question that someone has asked. Okay, go for it. And uh, it's related to, so I, I just put it in here. 
okay. it says a person is so indulged in the worldly desires you know he he loves to you know watch movies he goes out for sporting activities yeah. he's always with his friends and he's so he's so busy that he forgets he forgets about the the essence of ramadan how can he fully benefit out of mahr ramadan without having such a massive change in his life how can he do it gradually even this late yeah so um the these these key points especially the point of reflection will slowly and gradually bring change in him you see when you're so used to uh, uh for example doing certain things it becomes a habit in your life and removing habits is difficult but one of the ways to start removing that habit is to keep reminding yourself so on the first day for example you go and you'll just do what you were doing if you catch yourself in the middle and like oh i'm not supposed to do this and you stop yourself from doing it now you've realized you're conscious that what i'm doing right now is wrong before i wasn't conscious i was so used to it i, I just kept doing it when you become conscious and you stop yourself from doing it now you're slowly gradually strengthening your will power you're slowly and gradually getting a control over yourself next time you'll see that you will be re- become conscious of that action much quicker so self reflection helps you to bring bring that gradual change people start at different levels one person might be so engrossed for example in his in his day to day life that for example for him the start might be somewhere else right we all have to strive according to our own circumstances according to our own capacity okay so even right now if we start reflecting if we start thinking about this thinking itself you know it needs to get used to you forget to think and then you'll come back and become conscious oh i forgot to reflect about this let me think about it now this is something that happens slowly slowly but if you act on it every time you become conscious and you remember you start acting on it you will see that very quickly you're able to change yourself bring change in yourself make reflection a habit okay so you'll be able to catch yourself in the wrong situation much faster you'll be able to reflect about important things much more easily and when you're able to reflect about things you realize that this person for example who's so engrossed in in other stuff let's say he's engrossed in in uh um, i don't know some some um uh whatever hobby he has right because he sees benefit in that but when he slowly and gradually gets used to uh reflecting and reflects from time to time about the importance of mahr ramadan and other things for example one brother or sister mentioned the import uh reflecting about our purpose in life see reflection i've just brought two points of reflection there's a lot of things we need to reflect about to bring real change one of them is our purpose in life we need to stop sit down and think what am i doing with myself where do i want to go right this is something we need to sit down and think about and if we think about these things and you will be able to see a, a gradual change in a person so thinking is the key for internal change okay that's it we got a question yep yeah, perfect uh so i have a question um i have this i don't know how far it's true that uh, sometimes shaitan makes uh, salah and, and namaz seem very sweet to someone okay is that true shaitan makes do you know do you have the context because i don't have the context i, I heard it from a lecture long ago but okay. yeah i the shaitan sometimes would come and make salah very or or ibadah very sweet to someone okay I can think I can think of it in in different context. Uh one context can be for example it can make salah sweet for someone to then bring takabbur in there in them in their heart. Right? Shaitan knows that if I if I try and convince this person not to pray I'm not going to get anywhere. This person is going to pray. Okay? So how do I get to him? And Shaitan may see that this person is is um um is uh, let's say forgetful about his Uh, arrogance he gets he gets proud very fast so let me tackle it that way so he may salat sweet for him so that through this salat then he can start make bringing thoughts in that person look i pray so much i'm so good you know i'm better than that other person and through that shaitan brings him down right so perhaps in that context it it could make sense but i would need to need to know the context of of this to be able to have a proper explanation but these are some of the possibilities why this could happen asan So we need to always be conscious of our actions just because we pray we fast you know in the outward we might look like we're religious right but we might have certain disease in our hearts that if we don't pay attention to them if we don't have this a uh, reflection of our actions and of our feelings and of our thoughts if we don't 
analyze them and, and you know keep watching them and we could fall into these other traps of arrogance or jealousy and things like that okay so let's move on to the next slide uh brother Irfan or uh, brother ali uh, just let me know when you want me to stop um, i don't have too much more but because there's questions and coming in it's interactive obviously it, it makes it a bit longer so do let me know uh when it's appropriate to uh, oh, please continue uh, please continue yeah. when the questions keep on coming we don't mind them let the questions keep on coming and we'll answer them okay cool okay Okay, so now let's uh, look at uh, Mahir Ramadan in the, in the perspective that we're in right now, in the context we're in right now, which is that we are sort of stuck in our own houses, right? We're isolated because of the, the virus right now, and uh, we should pray that Allah uh, quickly uh, brings shifa and uh, helps us get rid of this big bala that has affected the whole world, uh, inshallah. Um, but in the situation that we're in right now, and uh, we're all stuck in our houses, we can see this uh, from a positive perspective and see it as a hidden blessing. Now, let me just clarify one thing that Islam uh, generally is not in favor of seclusion. Okay. Because a lot of uh, human perfections uh, are dependent on uh, social interactions. So, for example, if you don't if you don't mix in society, then how is how are you uh, you know tested for let's say um, uh, let's say ribat, right? If you're always on your own, then you've not really worked on yourself such that if if you're put in a situation, you wouldn't do riba, right? So you're still weak in that sense. Your perfection and your progress comes in social interaction. Definitely, we're gonna miss that one for sure. <laughs> the mosque stars. Especially the chai. I'm going to miss the chai. So a lot of our perfections uh, rely on social interaction. So in general, Islam is not in favor of long-term seclusion. But we do have short-term seclusion. A, a big example is uh, etikaf. Etikaf is a three-day seclusion inside the masjid. That is not only uh, accepted in Islam, but it's very recommended in Islam, right? So we have these temporary seclusions, and these have benefits. So some of the benefits, it's a time for reflection on important things. Again, this point of reflection will keep coming again and again because it's really key for a lot of these things. Um, we have more time to do other things. I mean, those of you who go to Etikaf, you realize that you're inside the masjid for three days and you're like, okay, now what on earth am I going to do here for three days, right? You're just going to get tired of speaking the whole time. You just feel tempted. You know, you feel that temptation. Let me just recite a bit of Quran. Let me just recite a bit of dua. You know, pick up a tasbih, do tasbih, you know, pick up a book. You know, this, when you're secluded and, and you can't go out and your, your daily routine is sort of messed up, then you can create more time to do other things. There's less peer pressure. One of the um, strongest or, or one of the biggest factor that takes us uh, away from Allah and makes us do things that we wouldn't normally do is peer pressure, right? Uh, bad friends. So when you're stuck in the house, the peer pressure is relatively less. I won't say it's not there. Uh, but it's relatively less, right? You can spend more time with your family, so uh, your brothers, your sisters, your parents. If you have kids, then you can spend more time with your kids, and so on. There are many benefits of seclusions, and I'm sure you guys are uh, uh, realize that. So we need to make the most of that. This is something that we can use to our benefit in this month of Ramadan. We can spend a bit more time reflecting. We just talked about the importance of reflection. We just talked about the the uh, uh, the fact that reflection is that key that brings self-change. So we need to put a bit of time for that. We need to, you know, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran, is the month of Dua. We need to put a time, a time for that. But there are also dangers, right? Self-isolation is a hidden blessing, but it has its own uh, pitfalls. So I'll just mention uh, very few. Uh, one is that we end up, we may end up wasting time. Okay. Um, It's very easy that when you're stuck at home, you just don't feel like doing anything. You just, you know, procrastinate, you know, I've got loads of time, I'll do it later. Um, and you just end up wasting your time because you don't know what to do with your time, right? That can easily happen. I think that that's quite a common danger. Another very big danger is the private sins that we can commit in our own rooms, in our own houses, right? Uh, with you know, with the with the media right now on social media, we can there's many sins, movies, music, 
and other things that um, opportunities for sins are not only when you're in society. Sins can be committed anywhere. So these are dangers and sometimes being alone too much is not good because we can be tempted towards bad things. So we need to keep this in mind. Again, we need, if really, if we, if we try to think about these and reflect about these, then we can protect ourselves more. You see, if you think, okay, I'm at home all day. Let me think about it. What sins am I faced with? Okay. And what pushes me to commit those sins? Okay. What pushes me to commit those sins? Um, when am I more tempted to commit that sin? If we reflect about these, then we can remove these obstacles. We can work around these. But if we don't think about it, we won't know how to solve it. Uh, why would you listen to music in the month of Ramadan? Well, some people are, are um, addicted to music. Some people listen to music. I mean, it's the month of Ramadan, but you know, habits are hard to, to remove. Um, so people might do that. Well, we can use this month of Ramadan uh, we can use the opportunity and the ease of obeying Allah as a way and an opportunity to remove these bad habits, definitely. I think someone raised their hands. Yeah, so um, I need to imagine a scenario where uh, someone would be fasting, someone would be praying uh, okay. in the month of Ramadan. But then, you know, sometimes when you would pray with your heart and sincerity, you would feel a feeling of peace. Yeah. Now, assume someone just prays just for the sake of it, just fasts yeah. for yeah. the sake of it. Yeah. To what extent will this change someone's life in terms of spirituality? Um, so, uh, if you don't mind, uh, can we come back to this in the next slide? Because this yeah. point, yeah. I wanted to bring it. So, um, I'll just discuss it in the next slide, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, let me quickly talk about the solutions for these dangers, okay? Uh, the first one is time management. We need to manage our time. If we manage our time properly, we set a timetable and a schedule for ourselves, then we'll be able to control uh, the amount of time we waste. Secondly, we need to reflect. Reflection again comes again, and it will come again and again. If we reflect and realize the, the dangers and where we fall into sins, then we can uh, remove those obstacles and, and do something about it. Uh, we need to start controlling our actions. At the end of the day, we need to take things in our own hands. We can't rely on, on outward uh, help all the time, right? You won't always have a parent looking on top of you. You won't always have a teacher looking at you or a sheikh around you or a friend around you. you need to, we need to realize that, look, I need to take my life seriously and in my own hands and I need to do something about it. Right? So there's an amount of you know, willpower and decision to want to change and to want to make a difference in yourself. And finally, to, do, to have tawakkul on Allah and to dua. To ask Allah again, like we mentioned previously, the success in tawfiq comes from Allah, so we need to ask Allah for help, for protection against the dangers of self-isolation. We need to ask Allah to help us to benefit from self-isolation and uh, to be protected from the dangers. And uh, obviously trust in Allah uh, in all of that. So how should we use our time? The first thing is focus on the wajibat and avoid muharamat. Okay, so coming back to the brother's uh, question. There are some times where we, we perform our prayers, we fast, and we feel that spiritual vibe in us. Excellent. But there are some times we really don't feel anything. We're just praying, we're just fasting, and inside us is just empty. Do these prayers and fasting have value or not? If we understand what it means, a wajib, what a wajib action means and what haram means, okay, the answer will become very clear. Let's put it this way. We need to progress towards Allah. Okay? And that progress comes with actions. We need to perform certain actions. Allah who created us knows what actions will take us to Allah and what actions will stop us from getting to Allah. What actions will take us to eternal bliss and what actions will take us to eternal condemnation? Those actions which are crucial, which are fundamental for us to get to Allah are those that Allah has made wajib. Basically, if you look at it like this, Allah has said, I know there are certain things that without those you cannot come to me. You cannot get paradise. Therefore, I will make those compulsory for you. You have to do them. Why? Because they are the ones that will take you to me. 
doing them, just doing them, right? Not necessarily with, uh, with concentration, just performing that action. That concentration is an added value to it, but that action on its own itself brings a spiritual change in us. On the other side, haram actions are those actions which Allah is trying to tell us, look, if you do that action, you will never get close to me. You will keep going down and down and down into hell. These actions are going to make haram for you. Don't ever get close to them. Right? So, when we do um, perform wajibat, even without concentration, there is an internal benefit that happens. Now, sometimes we have concentration and sometimes we don't. This is normal. This is something that uh, human beings have. There are ups and downs in human beings. It's a very normal thing. What Allah wants to see from you and me is that obedience, that submission. When it's salah time, do I come to pray or not? This is what Allah wants to see. The minimum level. The minimum Allah wants to see if are you coming to pray or not? Are you going to obey me or not? There are so many people who don't even do that. Right? There are so many people who went, they'll from Zohar time all the way to Maghrib, they just won't bother praying. So if you at least bother praying, you've done what Allah wanted. You've submitted to him at that minimum level. And when you do that, that definitely has a spiritual impact. True, if you do it with concentration, it's going to have a bigger impact. There's no doubt about that. But Allah wants you to do that minimum. Same for fasting. Allah wants you to fast. Whether you can concentrate or not. Whether during that fast you remember Allah or not. Whether you pray dua, do dua and recite the Quran or not. Allah wants you to fast. If you do that minimum, what you're telling Allah is, look, at least I've done what you've told me to do. You see? So this itself has a value. So never underestimate this. That spiritual feeling that comes is an additional blessing that Allah gives us. Sometimes when we pray, we have this feeling of spirituality. That is a blessing of Allah. That is not a sign that, you know, when you don't have that feeling, that means your namaz is not kabul. Not at all. There's sometimes you've just done riba of a mu'min and then you come and you pray the best of salah, Allahu Akbar, and you feel the spirituality. We've just done riba of a mu'min. <laughs> you know? Just because you have that feeling of spirituality doesn't necessarily mean that that namaz is maqbul. Right? That namaz is higher than the other namaz. We need to understand that submission to Allah is what is the key. Now, the better we do it, the higher the spiritual progress is. But that minimum is important. So we need to focus on the wajib and haram. Even if we can't do all these mustahabbat, at least we need to do the wajib and haram. That's the key. The key to spiritual progress is to focus on the wajib and the haram. Now I'll quickly go through these because we're, we're running out of time. Reading the Quran, it's the month of the Quran. Somebody mentioned earlier that this is the month where the Quran was revealed. There's a lot of emphasis on reading the Quran in this month. So we should use our time in doing this at least. Thirdly, spending time talking to Allah. This is something we really lack. And as a community as well, I think we really lack this. We do recite du'as, but rarely do we recite du'a with understanding, right? And dua with understanding is in two ways. One is that you speak to Allah in your own words. Open up to Allah. Just tell Allah what you feel. Complain to Allah. Oh Allah, this is hard. I can't do it. Help me. Right? Speak to Allah. Either in sajda or sitting. Go in a corner in your, in your room at night just before sleeping. And talk to Allah. Tell Allah, you see my situation. I'm finding it really hard. Right? Please help me. Understand my situation. Forgive me. I'm trying. You know? And then there are other du'as which have been given to us by the Imam, Dua Iftitah, Dua Abu Hamza Tumali, and all the other small du'as, those are also have value. Reciting them has value, reciting them with understanding has even more value. And there's a lot of depth in those du'as as well. Performing some of the recommended amal on the special nights, again, really important. Uh, we should put some time for learning, especially now that we're, we're stuck in our homes and perhaps our, um, our daily schedule is lighter, then we can spend a bit of time um, learning. It's important not to put too much pressure on yourself. Keep a balance. Don't let yourself loose, but also don't put too much pressure. Don't force yourself to do every single thing that's there in Mafati al Jinan, right? It's quite heavy. It may be too much for you. You may crack under that pressure. Just try and keep that balance, right? And that's how you'll be able to increase your capacity and make the most of your time, make the most of the month of Ramadan. If you keep that balance, then slowly, slowly, you'll be increasing your capacity and be able to do more in that little time. Okay. Um, so this is how uh, some tips on how we can use our time. 
So I'm just going to um, end it here. If there's any questions, then we can answer the questions. Otherwise, I wanted to share some some uh, material on how you can uh, get some extra extra information. So the the sermon of the Prophet on the last Friday of Shaban, uh, which is I brought some of snippets for you. It's not a very long uh, very long uh, khutbah, but it's a really powerful khutbah. It's a very big um, wake up call. And if we can re uh, reflect on each of these statements or some of them, it can have a big impact on how we enter the month of Ramadan. Uh, so the translation is there in alislam.org. Uh, Al-Islam also has a, a small article, a booklet from uh, Sheikh Mansur Laghai on fasting. I haven't read it personally, but I know Sheikh Laghai to be a, a good scholar, so I'm pretty sure that this would be a good read. And finally, our own institute, uh, we're inshallah releasing in two days a few short courses. So that's something as well that you can look into if you're interested. So uh, that's it from uh, my side. How long is the Barbara course? Uh, the Barbara, uh, the online courses that we're doing, they're small, uh, small courses. So the Ramadan one is going to be about eight hours. Uh, building relationship of the Quran is about four, five hours. Time management is about four hours. They're short courses. We're trying to make something that's um, uh, short, uh, practical. People can, you know, practically listen to them. They're not very long. And we try to keep it um, uh, relevant as well. So, um, and they're flexible, so you can listen to them in your own time. Would I recommend doing Laylatul Qadr Amal the odd days in the last 10 days? Um, the main nights of Laylatul Qadr are the 19th, 21st, 23rd. Um, there's different uh, views about when the exact Laylatul Qadr is. Um, I don't have the uh, references and the sources in mind right now, so I can't give you an uh, exact answer for this. But as far as I know, the scholars have emphasized more on, on, the, 20, on the 19th, 21st, and especially the 23rd. So definitely don't miss those, miss those three nights. Obviously, if you can do the A'mal uh, in, the, in the odd days in the last uh, uh, 10 days, or even the whole 10 days, then again, it's, it's very good. Uh, but with that, keeping in mind, keeping the fact that you know, you shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself and do as much as you feel, uh, you know, comfortable doing. But whether it's recommended or not, um, that I would, I would have to look at the, the sources. I don't have it in mind. Thank you so much, Brother Yasser. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you don't mind me quoting, quoting what you told me before the session, that you were going to strangle me. <laughs> oh, okay. But your session is so uh, honestly, <laughs> it's so it's so beautiful. I ca I can't I can't think of a better way to start my Ramadan. So amazing! Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Agreed, agreed. You're welcome. If you're gonna quote me, you need to let me explain myself. I said I'll strangle <laughs> you because I wasn't expecting a <laughs> program like this. <laughs> Even he owes me a strangling, by the way. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the participants as well for joining. Amazing, amazing turnout. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much, guys. Yeah. Um, thanks. thanks.